failure is, I feel like you, you just get up and you go again. Uh, you know, in coding, that's like you fail fast. Like you want to run your code to see if it has a bug, and if it does, it fails fast, and you you figure it out, you find it, you try it again, it fails again, you try it again, you you find the bug, and you move on. Carly Kloss is a 25-year-old supermodel with a mission that takes her well beyond the world's runways. She's in her fourth year of running Code with Klossy, a summer camp that teaches girls 13 to 18 how to code. What started as a three-city operation is now in 25 cities with 50 free camps. Carly came by to talk about why she's so passionate about getting girls into STEM education and what comes next. Carly, the fact that you are on the side running a coding camp for girls and for teaching um, young women how to code and start in the STEM education, that's not a normal career path for a supermodel. How do you think about navigating your career? Is this, is this your, is, is, is modeling career A and this is B? When I first started my career, I didn't take it seriously as a career. I was really inspired by everything that was happening around me, um, but I, I didn't take it seriously as like, this is the profession that I'm going to do for the next 10 years and I'm going to build businesses through it and I'm going to build a nonprofit and, and help many other people. I just took it day by day and learned from every opportunity that I've been able to, um, to, to have. And that's kind of how I feel like I still live my life. I love, I love business. I love learning about different industries. You know, I have three sisters and my dad and mom are both um, very entrepreneurial people. And so we would go on road trips and we would all pile into the car. We would drive down to Florida to go visit my grandparents and we would listen to tapes. There was this series called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it was all about kind of, it's not about how much money you make, it's how much you keep. And that really ingrained in me from an early on age that I need to work hard, but I need to do something that I love so I'm happy to work hard and save money and be thoughtful about like assets, liabilities. I mean, from an early age, this was kind of all in my vocabulary um, because my parents really exposed us to like financial literacy and, and being... Um, thoughtful about even just your personal finance. When you went to your first coding academy, were you doing it because you wanted to be entrepreneurial? I had no idea that I would be sitting here a few years later and, and building anything. My intention was really just to demystify what coding was. I took a coding class because I was really interested in just understanding the skill set not even mastering it, but just understanding high level what code was. I, I, I wanted to just, I guess, it's simply put, I'm just a really curious person and I like asking questions and I, I just wanted to kind of understand like what happens, why when I click something, does something else happen? So have, I've been in fashion for 10 years, love my day job, but had some some time where I was like, you know what, I would love to go back to school. So I applied back to NYU and I was waiting to hear if I was, if I'd gotten in and I took a summer class, a one week boot camp learning the ABCs of coding. And in that one week, I, my eyes were open to kind of the power of code and the fact that it is a language and that it can be learned. And even in a couple of days, you can cover a lot. And I realized that not only in the, the school that I was taking classes, there weren't equal men and women, but then at large in the industry, there's obviously a, a, a major gap between uh, the men and women, especially on the engineering side in tech. Mm -hmm. And I took my first coding class in the summer of 2014. And then in the, the following summer, I put on a scholarship to, um, to, to fund 20 girls to learn how to code. We got thousands of applications for those 20 spots. And so because of that, I realized, okay, wait, maybe we should be thinking about more than just these 20 young women. How can we reach more? 
so that following summer, I wanted to put on the camps myself. And so we, we had three camps that first summer in New York, LA, and St. Louis. And the next summer, which was last year, we had 15 camps. And this summer, we're going to have 50 camps across the country, and we're going to teach 1,000 girls to learn how to code. That's amazing. 25 different cities. Is that 25 right? 25 different cities. How involved are you in this? What, when do you get involved? Nights, weekends, uh, on my lunch break. This is kind of my, my full-time focus um, in addition to my, my job. So we're putting together our camps for this summer. So there's a lot going on. Our applications are open right now. So we are um, kind of in that final push to get girls signed up for this summer. Uh, so it's kind of my, my focus uh, all the time. We were talking to Gwyneth Paltrow not too long ago about uh, Goop. And one of the things that she mentioned was that she went from being an actress and in Hollywood she was treated one way. And then she went to go raise venture capital and she was treated an entirely different way. As you traverse these two worlds of fashion and of entrepreneurship or scholarship, yeah. do people treat you in different ways? I wouldn't say people treat me differently. Um, I don't see myself differently. Mm -hmm. I, I first and foremost am someone who is hardworking. I think I have a, a unique perspective because of the industry that I come from. Um, but it's probably something that I have to, uh, I wonder, I, I, it probably subconsciously drives me a little bit. Hmm. So I have learned a lot about uh, the venture capital world, around about the business world, about the tech world, and feel you know, that's not my, my day job or my full focus, but I feel comfortable in those worlds. What's the reaction from your peers? Everyone's super supportive. They, and I wouldn't say, you know, beyond even just fashion, I think most people don't know what code is. Mm -hmm. I think they understand that technology is transforming the world in every industry, but I don't think that, I think, some, I think most everyone gets a little insecure in feeling like, it's just a little beyond their pay grade. It's a little too intellectual. It's something that they didn't take that class in college and they kind of wish they would have. Right. How do you think about success? Do you, are, are there certain metrics that you look, look at to say, this is working, it's not working? For me, what is so important in what we're doing with Code with Classy and the camps themselves is the quality of the learning experience. Mm -hmm. What really is success to me is, is creating an experience that is really impactful and really in fun. Dare I say it, like fun. And how do you know if you're, if you're doing that? Because the girls come, they are, they tell, they, they tell us uh, first and foremost. And we have data, we have, you know, surveys and everything, but they are so engaged in the community. They come back year after year, not only to keep learning with us, but also to teach, to, to be teacher assistants, to help kind of share what they've learned. They go on to start their own coding camps or cl coding classes or coding clubs at their schools. What kind of a, a leader or a manager are you? And, and how do you reach out to people who, this might be their expertise and you need to get up to speed on it. You need to know who to trust and who not to trust. I'm really lucky to have a lot of great mentors. You know, we were talking about Diane von Furstenberg. She's been a great mentor. Uh, Natalie Massonet, she founded net porte She's been a, a great friend and mentor. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow is somebody I really admire for, for, for all that she's building. I, I like to learn from other people who, um, who, who I am lucky to have access to or, or just research and mm -hmm. study. But it's been a real learning curve, and I'm somebody that learns by doing. I, I love to, and that's literally by like learning about how to start a nonprofit by actually starting a nonprofit or learning how, like, what technology, like, it, how it's built by like actually taking the class. And then, I don't know, I like to learn by doing. And to that point, building a team has been something that's been a learning curve for me because I'm 25 years old and I've been working professionally for 10 years, but only in the last couple of years have I, you know, now I have an office and I have 10 people on payroll and I have, you know, it's more grown up and, and formal than it was, um, it has been through the years. And so for me, you know, I didn't go to business school. I didn't go, I don't have a, a full degree from college, um, but, I, but I love 
you know, continuing to figure things out as I go. And I don't think that that means that I can't, um, I can't do it. So I, I, I learn from, from the amazing people that, that are in my life. Are there any things that you've done that you look back on, even just the last few years, you're like, oh, I did this wrong. I should have done this. Trust me, there have been plenty of failures. Um, I don't know if they're even failures, though, because I feel like that's such a, like, def that's such, like, a, uh, a solid, concrete status. Like, failing is not such a terrible thing. I wouldn't say that I've failed, but I have done a lot of small projects that I've learned from, and I'd like to think I have a very entrepreneurial spirit, um, and I'm kind of just learning little lessons from the projects that I'm building to, at the right time, build a big business. You have a long career ahead of you. How, how do you think, where do you want to be in 10 years, in 20 years? Now, I definitely am thinking big picture about the kind of things that I want to keep building, the kind of impact I want Code with Classy to have. And I have a lot of ambitions and ideas for my for my day job still, for, for being a model. You know, I, I hope to, to be in the industry uh, for, for many years to come.